Color, shape, and value. That's really the essence of what painting is, at least for me, and I like to break things down strategically. So I'm going to do a quick time lapse of how I did that in order to make my own Winslow Homer, which was a lot of fun, and I always learn from doing these. So let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe. And just so you know, I wrote a book called Three Step Watercolors. You can find it on Amazon. The first thing that I do is I make columns. I have a dark column, a medium column, and a light column. And I am going to look at shapes and I'm going to mix colors. And when I know which column they go in, I'm going to apply them to the painting. And in the end, I will create forms. This is exactly what Paint by Number does. Only in Paint by Number, they've already done it for you. They've given you the little paint pots and they've also assigned each one of these colors a number value. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically doing the same thing. It's, it's the process for how I kind of approach all of my paintings. The first thing that I do is I get rid of any whites that I don't want to drive over by putting a small amount of Naples yellow on them. That just reminds me not to drive over them. Then I get serious. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm putting in my darks and I just look for the pattern of darks. I squint my eyes and look at the darks and I don't care what the thing is. It doesn't matter if it's a log. It doesn't matter if it's a boat. It doesn't matter if it's a face. Nothing matters except the shape. The shape, the color, and the value. Mostly color, mostly shape and value, to tell you the truth. So that's what I'm doing here, getting, making, getting in all my darks. And so that's what you're going to see in the dark column. I mix my darks and then apply them where I see them. Now slowly I'm going to go up the value scale. I've tipped just a little bit. You can see that's still in the dark column, according to the viewfinder, which is that red piece of plexiglass that comes up. So it's definitely dark, but it hasn't changed through the viewfinder yet. It still reads exactly the same. Now the intensity of the color is different. We're not talking about brightness here. We're not talking about brightness or dullness. We're just talking about darkness or lightness. And we are not talking about temperature. We're not talking about warmth or coolness. Those are different concepts. And I'm not saying I don't consider them, but when I'm doing my value shape kind of painting, uh, those are not as important to me. They would be important if this was the, a painting of a white dog in a white room on a white bed. <laughs> that would be all about temperature and color and, and brightness, but that's uh, as well as these concepts. But as long as something is as well-defined as this is, thank you, Winslow Homer, for doing this for me, he's already mapped everything out for me. He's showing me where he made the decisions of where the darks, the mediums, and the lights should go. I'm just following the map that he made. I'm not trying to reproduce what he did. All I'm doing is moving up the value scale. So you see, the dark column has mostly been taken care of. I've moved into the mediums and moving on to the lights. Now admit it, oh, see, there's a medium right there. Anytime a red is gonna enter the picture, it's gonna read as a medium, it just is. Um, same thing with anything that really slants quite a bit toward yellow. And some of those, although you could argue they're sort of sandy colors or something like that, but through the value finder, there, there's a definite difference between what I see in the light column and what I see in the medium column and what I see in the dark column. And as long as I don't confuse them, because if I confuse them and get it mixed up, then the eye won't read the shapes correctly. And that's where this value shape confusion comes from. And that just ends up being like a kaleidoscope of craziness. But if I follow my plan and my strategy, which is just tell myself, how dark is something? All right, I'll mix something up that dark. What shape is it? All right, I'm gonna match it to the shape. What value, what I say, value, shape, color. Yeah, and color is important too. I mean, obviously in the background, you can see there are quite a few uh, greens in the background. Most of this painting tips toward cool though. Most of this painting sort of tips toward blue. But what it does is it allows me to just give a little tiniest bit of a window into who Winslow Homer is and how he made the decisions that he made. And this is just one section of this of the painting that I did. And I thought, oh boy, if to ever have all the skills at, at your fingertips that, that he had, what, what a delight that would be. But we're all painting for these for these moments, you know, these moments of discovery and also for these moments of, um, well, losing yourself really. 
you know, I was conscious of what I was doing probably for the first 10 minutes. But once things get going, you get into that super seeing. You start seeing beyond what the eye sees. It becomes more like a seeing and feeling exercise. And then I don't even know what's happening. It becomes so automatic at that point that a bomb could go off and I wouldn't know the difference. I am so in the painting zone that you know words don't even apply. And that's one of the um, challenges when it comes to interviewing the artists that I've been interviewing for Portrait Artist of the Year because we're constantly talking about concepts but the reason most painters paint is because we we don't there are no words to express the concepts that we want to share. That's why we use a visual medium. So to apply words to to these concepts is is really really hard. And and that's part of why if you read about art, it can become so pretentious and and so es esoteric. Is that the word? I think I said that wrong. Probably did. But anyway, in the end, it really comes down to color, shape, and value. And if you can get those organized and practice them in your head and put them near each other in the correct order that you are, uh, that your brain sees them, you can have a recognizable image. And that's what I do. I call it value, shape, color, painting. I know it's watercolor painting, but it really works for me. And like I said earlier in introduction, I did write a, a book about it, you know, three-step watercolor, which is still a good book. It's, it's on Amazon. It's, it's a very good book, actually, about color, value, and shape. It does not deal with brightness and dullness, and it does not deal with temperature, simply because I didn't really understand those things when I wrote the book, whereas I understand them much more now. Not that I could write about it, and not that I want to write about it, but, <laughs> you know, writing is hard. Writing is hard. Uh, painting is hard too, but in a, in a very different way. If you're a painter, then you probably know how delightful it is to go into that side of your brain that has nothing to do with words at all. It is just, you know, it's like sitting down and listening to the waves on the ocean or, or a beautiful symphony or any time I would put in a, a piece that Mozart has done and it just puts me in such a happy place. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white. If you're a watercolor painter, you know what I mean, because if you lose the whites of your paper, you cannot get them back. No matter what you do, you cannot get them back. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, uh, mass for value, and mix for color. And thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.